Well, let's right, call this meeting a break. <laughs> One, two, three. <clears throat> we're fixing to talk about behavior. Behavioral. I remind y'all, I am from Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what they used to say. Have you ever been to Alberta? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Isn't that right, Chief? about the behavioral. <laughs> behavioral, behavioral, I can't say that. All right, let's call, let's, we're getting these together. Let's call this meeting of the um, pre council order. Um, is there approval of the minutes? Motion. Second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes approved. Okay, Mr. Junkin. Yes, sir. This is one we visited about 30 or 60 days ago. It's the mobile home park out behind the water tower in Alberta. Uh, they made some pretty good progress over the last 30 or 45 days. They actually had equipment out there this weekend doing a, a, their version of a cleanup. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Their yeah. version. Their, yeah. Is this their the version. before or after? The important question is, Mr. Johnson, is it your version? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's April 3rd. Mm, they still got some, a ways to go. They, they've got the red mobile home is the one they're using to keep their equipment in because yeah. things keep getting stolen. They've got two more that's on this condemnation. Once they get those out, they've got two more trailers they're going to get out, but they've got occupants in them right now. We're trying to get those folks moved, and once they're gone, they're supposed to be moving those trailers out. You said the occupants are in the red trailer, Barry? No, sir. That's where they're storing their equipment. Oh. It, was, it was occupied right before we started this process. They got it vacated, and I guess it's the only one that's got good locking doors on it right now. But nobody's living out there right now. Uh, we've got one occupant we know for sure. With the other one is beside, you notice the, in that lower picture there to the, the trailer to the right, it was occupied as of about 30 days ago. And we haven't seen that tenant mm -hmm. in there in quite some time. And the people that's doing the work up there says they think that they've left, but the manager doesn't have any record of them turning their keys in or anything like that. So they probably just left. Yeah. But we got one more occupant in there. Once he gets gone, they're going to clean all the mobile homes out, and it won't be grandfathered anymore. Oh, man. Well, they'll be zoned, I think, to do what to do. I don't know, but they said they've got a buyer for the property, so maybe they're going to have some future plans for it, hopefully. And that's all we have for tonight. What are you recommending? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll... At least 30 more days. Okay. You don't give them too much time because it just, I agree. I think you. if we can give them 30 more days, we may have one more hearing after that. And we can close this one out and move on. I want to say, that since you're standing there, I want to thank you publicly your group, Ms. Kreitz's group, fire department, police department, for what y'all are trying to do at Cars to Guard. So I appreciate it. Well, the, the fire department, that. fire department, the police department were very instrumental on this. You know what's going on right now, along with the health department. You know they they mm -hmm. kind of run with it on this one. Good, well, it needs to be done. Thank you. All right, we'll see y'all this evening. Hey, thank, you. thank you, thank you, Barry. Zach. All right, I've got two public hearings for you guys tonight. Um, the first one is rezoning. 1.15 acres at 1717 18th place and 1805 Queen City Avenue from R3 to BN uh, for Mr. Bishop. So this is in Council District 2. Um, this is the property. It's very close to the train station. Um, yep. And he that, that building exists today. He purchased this property um, wanting to operate his heating and cooling business out of. It's mm -hmm. actually zoned R3 though. Um, and so he is trying to um, change it to BN in order to operate that business. It does not conform to framework. However, if you look at the framework, you know, these were existing. This might have been something that um, probably was missed during that framework process of, of identifying possible industrial or that, commercial that uses. It's been a long time. It has, time. and it's adjacent to, as you can see, the pink there is limited commercial. North, I believe, is industrial. And so. Um, 
So yeah, and then these are the permitted uses in BN, um, and it was unanimously recommended for approval. I, I spoke with him uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and I know it's a public hearing, but he's not going to come tonight because he has a procedure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I hope he's just, his mother-in-law will be here. His somebody gonna stand with because mm -hmm. I still uh, raise him with uh, he, yeah, he, his, his name is David Bishop, and he, when I tell you, he has a very great business, great business mind. Um, he will do right by what, what um, by his word. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. a man of integrity. And I have no problems with the, uh, I have no problems with the zoning. So he purchased the, the building, I mean, he purchased the property and it already had that industrial looking building on it. So, you know, then he found out that the zoning had changed and no one on the commission had a problem with it. Um, so, and he's a, you know, he's a trusted business partner in the community and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. And there was no, um, no negative comments towards it. Mm -hmm. Those people are not going to be beating the door down to put residential. Yeah. That train will wake the dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Somebody else does too. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the second one we have for you is the rezoning for the BBYMCA. Um, so, just in, uh, going from MG and R3 to institutional. Uh, this is also Council District 2. So this is the property, as you all clearly know today, and um, what it looks like from the air. And so this is just rezoning an institutional uh, for the proposed use. What is um, the proposed use? The In Benjamin Barnes YMCA relocation. What is it zoned right now? It is zoned, so the- You're talking about the area, right? Yes, sir. What, can you flip back to the photo? I'm, we're talking about the old Benjamin Barnes branch. No, we're talking no, about this the, is new. the new. The new. Where are they going to build the new? Yeah. yeah. This is what where the new one's going. going. So you can see. Um, Let's vote against it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of the, all of those little uh, those little lots on the north side, those are all R three, and then the rest of it is zoned industrial. So it's going to be a rezone <laughs> from R three and industrial. Yeah. Two institutions. That'll be an easy pass. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, it does obviously conform to framework, and these are the regulations um, for the institutional districts, and it was unanimously recommended for approval. So, any questions for Zach? Not too bad for tonight. Thank you, sir. Mayor Maddox. Yes, sir. Uh, just a few things. Uh, we we had an extremely busy week last week and it really stretched our team in a very in a very uh, productive way in a very meaningful way uh, first i, I want to thank brent and um, randy for the way they honored also from yesterday um, and i want to thank you because i know in many ways you were a liaison to mom mm -hmm. and so uh, certainly we, we, we did hopefully we did well in honoring his service to huntsville and to tuscaloosa and, and i appreciate the council members that joined us yesterday at the funeral itself and so I know it took a lot of work and logistics and uh, I appreciate everyone that played a role in that. Um, I want to thank our team for decaf. What a, you know, we got some good weather and uh, a and &E, I've got a lot of positive comments, um, but A&E, comms, all the different departments that played a role in that. I'm sure I'm obviously leaving someone out. Uh, did a fantastic job. The gauntlet out there, Mr. Busby's event where he's mm -hmm. making the city into Marines. Um, he, again, another exciting event, 300 plus people, I believe you told me, nearly Wow. And, and then on Sunday with the West Alabama Multicultural Alliance Heritage Festival and what we're doing with the Hinton Library, I mean, uh, the Linton Library, or Linton Barbershop, which we hope to uh, transform into something special in the near future. So I just wanted to take a moment and, and brag on our team and recognize a really good job they do and the customer service aspect of it really makes me proud and we're not perfect um, but I, I would put our team up against anyone and I really just want to say thank you to all of them because I know a lot of people had to work extremely hard to make it happen and also want to thank TTS um, for what they did um, in promoting those three events decaf gauntlet and the heritage uh, festival as well because they're valued partners so I just wanted to brag on our team for a second I appreciate the opportunity Absolutely. I did speak with um, Jan uh, Garrett's mother last night, and Chief, there's just 
she's she's in time. She will, you know, there's just no way uh, they can thank you and, and your department, the entire city, for what they did, for what y'all did. Yeah, I've never seen anything, you know, I said on my show today, I've gone through Officer Cassette, Kenneth Kroon, Officer Kroon, and now this, I hope this, is, I, I hope we never have to go through anything like this again. I've never, it's one of the most emotional things that I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. so, but I didn't think the cars were ever going to stop. It was over four miles long. Four miles long. Chief, I've never seen a procession for a while. Yeah. Like it's it's and, something uh, we, we, we take for granted every day. There's men and women, who, whether it's in our armed forces or whether it's here locally in, in terms of public safety, mm -hmm. put on that uniform with, with a higher than, you know, than a higher chance than most. They may not come home all in an effort just to protect us. Um, and when that debt's called, it's certainly in the communities, um, it's the community should honor and recognize that individual. And I was proud that Tuscaloosa could do that for his family. Same year. It was pointed, I mean, I, I noticed family members of our current officers out there with them, wives, maybe some husbands. And it's the spouses, the families are really a big part <coughs> Their, their husband, their wife, they go to work, and, you know, I, I had two kids that never told me they worried about that until they were adults, and it does affect the whole family in right. so many ways. Right. I hope you slept well last night. That was a long ride, wasn't it? <laughs> Those traffic officers that rode up there all in the rain and then came back had a really long day. <laughs> University of Alabama turned the stadium blue last night and um, they invited the family inside the stadium. Uh, it was one of the most beautiful scenes inside. Outside was but inside everything was blue and they had the mom and his sisters and that all the you know um, and they took pictures for them and um, That's really let them go inside. It was they were that was really sweet. Um, to turn the stadium blue and then treat them like they did too. It was great. Great to see. Okay, uh, Mayor, thank you. Um, Ms. Johnson. Right. So, if you guys take a look, you should all have a cute little cheat sheet and then you should also have a packet of documents to go along with that from the Indian Rivers Behavioral Health Board. Um, they have recently gone through a couple of changes, including a new executive director that was recently appointed earlier this year. Um, and with that, they have requested a couple of board appointments to be either filled. They do have, we do have one of our seats that are vacant. And then um, one of their other, one of our other appointees, their term has expired and they've requested to be reappointed. Um, so this is the request from the board president, Ms. Barbara Friedman, and um, their current executive director, Ms. Karen Jones. They're requesting that we appoint Dr. Karen Thompson Jackson to fill that vacant seat. And then um, Judge John England has actually requested to be reappointed for another six-year term. He has served on this board for two for since 2003, um, and they are very very pleased with all the work that he's done with them. Um, so it is a six-year term. Um, so keep that in mind when you guys make this decision. But if that's what you guys would like to do, we can have an ordinance reappointing them and appointing them next. I couldn't year. say yes fast enough. So yeah. 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 you can't get any better ones. I've never heard of John England. <laughs> That's his picture right there. <laughs> yes, so we'll get this taken care of next week. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I, I know I've gotten several calls from people who have turned their names into the tourism. Yes, Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Is We're accepting resumes now? through the 5th. Through tomorrow. Through tomorrow, yes. So after we close that out tomorrow, I'll pile everything together and send you guys a lovely PDF with, I think right now we have seven resumes, including mm -hmm. the two that... TTS submitted a couple weeks ago. Wow. Yes. Okay. Woo -hoo. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, counsel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am up towards the top of page two of your agenda here, where on page 10 you'll be concurring with the appointment of Brian Gurney as acting city engineer. 
On page 11, you'll be authorizing the mayor to sign a letter of support for the University of Alabama application for the FTA USDOT FY23 low or no emissions bus grant. That is doubled up and you will hear about it in projects today. On pages 12 through 13, you'll be authorizing the <coughs> acquisition by condemnation proceedings of permanent easement or rights of way for public streets and utilities for the Juanita Drive Phase 2 improvements project. Uh, that comes from my office. On page 14, you'll be authorizing the Chief of Police to execute a memorandum of understanding between the Tuscaloosa Police Department and the United, uh, the United States Drug Enforcement Administration. Uh, this was discussed in public safety last week. On page 15, you'll be authorizing the Chief of Police to execute a memorandum of understanding between the Tuscaloosa Police Department and the Tuscaloosa City Schools for school resource officers. This, again, was discussed in public safety last week. On page 16, you'll be authorizing execution of an agreement with the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs for the program year 2022 Emergency Solutions Grant Program. Uh, this will be doubled up and discussed in projects today. On pages 17 to 18, you'll be authorizing execution of agency funding agreements for the city's 2022 Emergency Solutions Grant Program through the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs. This again is doubled up and will be discussed in projects today. On page 19, you'll be authorizing the budget for State Revolving Loan Fund 2023 Clean, clean Water. Uh, this was discussed in finance on the 28th. On page 20, you'll be authorizing the budget for the State Revolving Loan Fund 2023 Drinking Water. This again was discussed in finance committee on the 28th. On page 21, you'll be authorizing disbursement from District 2 Improvement for West Alabama Multicultural Alliance as a total of $872 and was discussed in Finance Committee last week. On page 22, you'll be authorizing a minor public works contract with Alabama Stage Produ uh, Productions that has a total of $3,741.64. This is doubled up and will be discussed in projects today. On page 23, you'll be authorizing a execution of Statement of Work with Payments Corporation. This is a total of $4,275 and was discussed in projects last week. On page 24, you'll be authorizing a contract with Cypress Creek Landfill. That was discussed in projects last week. On page 25 through 26, you'll be introducing uh, zoning amendment number 1511, rezoning approximately 2.24 acres located at 3501 McFarland Boulevard East from BH to RMF2. On page 27, you'll be appointing voting delegates for the Alabama Municipal Insurance Corporation annual membership meeting. On page 28, you'll be authorizing amendment number 11 to the FY23 general fund budget. On page 29, you'll be setting April 18th as a date for hearing to consider approval of a conditional use for Black Warrior Burgers LLC. DBA Grandstand, this is located in the old Will Hagen's at 2209 4th Street um, as a gastro pub. On page 30, you'll be setting May 9th as the date for a public hearing to consider adoption of zoning amendment number 1511. Any questions for me? Two. Oh, um, go ahead. One, go ahead, Mr. Busby and Dan, because it's, it's page 29. 29, what's going on? Uh, 29, and I'll, I'll, I think I'll give my short version and I'll let zoning jump in if, if, if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong. Uh, this was a gastro pub conditional use that came before council maybe a month or so ago. Uh, the occupancy was somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 or above, uh, 375. Uh, that raised objections from our public safety folks. Um, I think council also did not want a gastro pub that large. Uh, they have now reapplied. They have changed the conditions, and they're setting. They're voluntarily setting their occupancy much lower than that. And so they're they're back. They plan to come back again to request a gastro pub. Uh, special condition from this body at a lower occupancy than, than where they were before. How much lower? I believe that 200 is where they've, where they've said they want to be. Um, city staff met with them uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, they have agreed to a 200 occupancy. Uh, my big thing is mega bars. Um, 200 occupancy I have no issue with from a police department standpoint. I will caution, however, since we had that meeting, twice they have tried to raise their occupancy back up. They've asked for, uh, I believe, 250. And then I believe it was a 300 yeah. on the second one. And I was very firm in my emails back to them. I will, I will not support anything over 200, not 201, not 205. And in your mind, 
is the cutoff between quote mega bar and not mega bar? Is that two hundred? In my opinion, yes, sir. Because you get above two hundred, it's just the it's just a lot more people. I think at two hundred, it's a reasonable size crowd that you can do things with in that area because it is so populated. Um, so two hundred, I'm okay with. Chief, have we had any trouble with that? No, sir. Not since I've been yeah, and just one caveat to that. So they are requesting 200 for the gastro pub, but they want to keep the 375 for private events not open to the public. So just keep that in mind. We, we've talked to them about double occupancy. We're not doing that anymore. So, and yeah, know, what was their response to, to that? To, the, to that, to us saying yeah. no. Yeah. Uh, they, we, we told them that, but we were like, I mean, you can request whatever you want, but highly, highly likely that they're not going to really be interested in it. Chief, do we have the numbers? Is there any way for us to kind of figure out the numbers of occupancy in that whole that whole area yeah, at a certain that. particular time? I thought those numbers, but I don't have them with me today. Uh, but we do have the numbers in that area. Gotcha. I, love to I see. wouldn't be for that at all. Now, any private party, and I, I put in my email to them that anything over two hundred, I want. They can say they have a private party every weekend. <laughs> yes, every <laughs> not. Then you're done that. Well, and, and, and <laughs> reminder for council that uh, this council passed an ordinance uh, roughly a month ago that said that uh, that people with restaurant retail liquor licenses are capped as their occupancy as a restaurant, which said the, the, the duel that they've asked for would be in conflict with, with y'all's code. Mr. Holmes, I've got another question. Yes, sir. Page 12, wanting to drive. When you... Um, Authorize the condemnation proceedings. How, what length of time will that does that normally take? I will let Mr. Bobbitt. He's our he's our expert there. I'll let him wait. It only in takes on about that. sixty days from day to file. Sixty days, roughly about sixty days from day to file. Okay, because the original Brian, you may, uh, I think the original, you know, give or take, June was. The last date Mike Gardner had mentioned to me about possibility of actually starting breaking ground, possibly. So that's why I wondered okay. would that would that change that June, July, something like that. Is that about right, Brian? I got it right here. Um, I mean, if we're sixty days, uh, I mean, we need to add another forty-five of that to get the bid. So we're we'll be on that June, July. Yeah. Yeah. Another sixty days on that. So we're really looking at all. It is what it is. Darn it! And there's four, three, kind of, three condemnations, and they can't surrender like happened on twenty fifth, like. To avoid going to court, they have to, don't they? And these things. Well, they can. They, they can, can at any point decide they, they want to voluntarily. They can at any time during the course of proceedings if they like. Because you remember the the Texaco yes. on twenty fifth, they ended up, you know, giving in. Uh, so nobody ended up going to court, and so it didn't slow anything down. Again, there are two of the three. One is a title issue. And the other is a gentleman that has that is in Washington State that generally is not comfortable. Okay. Well, thank you for all your work on it. It's been... Is that everything for me? Yes, sir. Thank you. As far as I'm concerned. Okay. Thank you. Projects, finance, admin, properties, all day. Um, in Council at 6, framework meeting tomorrow at 5. Um, is there a reason it's special called? Uh, all of the framework meetings are special call meetings just because they're outside of the Planning Commission's normal meetings. Gotcha. Our police pension Monday, 9 a.m. Um, any other communications or anybody here in the room? Council, Mayor? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, I want to thank our community for coming out on uh, the other week, and we will continue to uh, work on bringing the product to you all that we can uh, live with with the current Benjamin Barnes uh, site and also just to save the date for us uh, B-Rob Brian Robinson is coming to uh, his hometown on 
uh, Wednesday, May 10th, uh, at the First African Baptist Church to talk about um, preventing gun violence in our communities. And uh, so I want to just... Uh, he would know about it. He would know about it. Yeah. That's right. So I was... Uh, yes, sir, he was a victim. <laughs> and um, I will send this um, flyer to just ask everyone to save the date for that. What's his Robinson? Brian Robinson, B. Yeah. Rob. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's now with the um, Washington. Washington um, Commanders. That's right. And uh, Redskins. No, he's <laughs> Donnie Lee is on that committee, and several other people. Uh, Pam Pearson. Sounds great. All right. All right. Is there a motion that we adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion second to adjourn.